Welcome to Raw Online. Today we are going to discuss about facial spaces of hand. So competency for today's topic will be explain the infections of facial spaces of palm. So already we have discussed about the, the various anatomy of hand like what are all the layers in the hand and we all know uh, we have the deep fascia that is palmar aponeurosis in the hand. So because of this various fascia and the facial septa, there are facial spaces going to be formed in the hand. So these spaces are known as facial spaces of the hand. So these spaces are potential space, like potential means normally these spaces will be a, a slit like gap, will contain only uh, some loose areolar connective tissue. So that is the potential space. If there is a infection in the surrounding structure, the pus will be collected in the space. So in that condition, this space, these potential spaces will become a, a surgically significant spaces. So to discuss about this knowledge of boundaries are important to limit the spread of infection. So if we know the boundaries, various boundaries of facial spaces, we can uh, do the surgical procedure and we can understand the extent of spread of infection. That is the importance of the facial spaces of the hand. So going through the anatomy, so first we have the skin, the first layer we see is the skin. Once we reflect the skin, we see the superficial fascia. Once we open the superficial fascia, the next layer will be deep fascia and that is the palmar aponeurosis in hand. So once we remove this palmar aponeurosis, we will be reaching the neurovascular structures of the hand along with the muscles. The, so we have the small muscles, the intrinsic muscles along with the long flexor tendons of the hand. Okay, so deep to this we have the metacarpal bones and in between we have the interosseous muscle. So we will see the layer one by one. So once we remove the skin and superficial fascia, we reach the deep fascia. So here we can see the triangular palmar aponeurosis which is a deep fascia of palm. Once we remove this deep fascia, see here we can see the reflected end of the palmar aponeurosis. So once we reflect this palmar aponeurosis, the deep fascia, we see the neurovascular bundles. See here we can see the superficial palmar arch and the yellow color structure are the digital nerves. So along with this neurovascular bundle, below which we see the long flexor tendons. So we already have discussed about these long flexor tendons and ulnar bursa, radial bursa. So here the long flexor tendons for medial four fingers will be covered by a common synovial sheath and that is known as ulnar bursa. And this and the tendon, long flexor tendon to the pollicis fingers, the, the thumb finger that is the, the synovial sheath covering this flexor pollicis longus will be known as radial bursa. So here we can see the ulnar bursa, radial bursa and long flexor tendons and with the lumbrical muscle, see here we can see a slender warm like muscle. So these are lumbrical muscle. So this will be below the neurovascular bundle. So once we reflect the long flexor tendons, we can reach the deep most layer that is the metacarpals. So here we can see the metacarpals and in between the metacarpals we see the interosseous muscle. So here we can see both palmar interosseous as well as dorsal interosseous muscle and we see a transversely running fibers that is adductor pollicis muscle. Okay. So this is about the, uh, the anatomy, overview of the anatomy of hand. So first we see skin and superficial fascia, once we open we see the deep fascia, once we cut out the deep fascia we reach the neurovascular bundle that is superficial palmar arch and digital nerves. And deep to this we have the long flexor tendons and deeper most layer will be the metacarpals and interosseous muscle. So here this section is cross section. See the, uh, we have seen the uh, anterior view of the hand. So here we are going to see about the cross section. So in the cross, cross section you have to get oriented to the structures. So this is the 
cross section of the right hand. So, this is the lateral aspect and this is the medial aspect. So, in the lateral aspect we all know near the thumb we have a group of muscle and that is thinner group of muscle and here below the uh, little finger we have the hypothenar group of muscle. So, here you just orient that this is the thinner group of muscles and this is the hypothenar group of muscles. Okay. So, by looking these two we can identify this is lateral aspect and this is medial aspect. Now, coming through the layers from superficial to deep the first layer we saw that is uh, the skin and superficial fascia and below that this is the deep fascia of palm that is palmar aponeurosis. So, once we cut the palmar aponeurosis next we see the long flexor tendons. So, here we can able to see the cut end of the tendons and deeper to this will be the metacarpal bones and in between the metacarpal we see the intraosseous muscle. Okay. Now, you just have a look on this gross section of the hand, what all the various structure here. Now, our facial spaces lying between this deep fascia, below the deep fascia and below these tendons. Right, we will see the next anatomy about these facial spaces. You just have to have this orientation of cross section of the hand. 